It's the Knicks, Jets, etc. podcast with Alex Trateris, John Malika, and Ricey on the beat. Let's go. What's good, everyone? Alex Jeteris here with another Jets episode of the Knicks, Jets, etc. podcast. And with me, as always, but of course, my pal, the man, the plan, the one and only, the one and only, John Malika. And with us, as always, the Rock, the Foundation himself, video producer Greg. Gentlemen, thank goodness we did not record yesterday. <laughs> I think I may have, I think I may have broken my computer if we actually had to record because that game was gross. It was nasty. Not, on, not only for you, man, but wh- for whoever had that jet spread. Oh, I mean, it was just a gross game for everyone with that stupid safety at the end. But yeah, man, the season's over. Thank God. Everyone was right, except for me. We didn't make the playoffs. All right. Clap it up. You're right. I was wrong. You totally what are you knew. About? You totally, everybody totally knew when the Jets had seven wins that we weren't going to win again. Um, and everybody knew that Zach Wilson sucked. It's just such a such a roller coaster season, man, and it sucks where we are. But I've I've accepted this since the last time we scored a touchdown, which was Detroit. Like I've accepted this already, so I'm not like falling over my heels um, as I feel the Jets fan base is because we haven't scored a touchdown since the Detroit Lions game ever since that fourth and inches to the backup tight end happened that went for the for a touchdown. That was it. That was the end of the season. We look like a shell of a football team since. It's okay. We move on. All right. 33 straight possessions with no touchdown. We move on. We got we got lucky that we had a bunch of wins early this season. We got unlucky with injuries. We had rookie players everywhere that did phenomenal. So that's another I would say lucky, <laughs> to be honest with you. I think the prospects of this season, we overachieved from the preseason outlook, but we underachieved from the midseason outlook is what it is. I'm feeling good about this team, though, boys. I know I'm ready. I've been in offseason mode. I've been telling you guys mock draft, mock draft. I've been I've been in offseason mode. Uh, I'm ready to go here. We are the 13th pick. Thank God we lost that game. I was actually worried about it for a while. Oh, uh, so you wanted to lose this game. We needed to lose this game. The 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 13th pick makes such a big difference. Do you have trichodecophobia, by the way? I just want to make sure. I just want to just asking questions. Just because thir- 13 is uh, super suspicious for some people. Uh, I don't give a damn. We need 13 because Paris Jr. is coming if we don't trade for a quarterback. But that's a different story for a different day. Greg, what are your thoughts on this season, man? Are you feeling up? Are you feeling down? You feel neutral because you already saw this coming? Yeah, I mean... Uh, I feel pretty neutral in the season. Like you said, it was quite a roller coaster. It was one of the better seasons that we've had as Jets fans in the last five seasons or so. Um, really thought we were going to make the playoffs at the midseason point. So that definitely is disappointing. Um, but yeah, overall, I thought it was a great season. Great season for the young guys, at least on our team. I'm happy to see some veterans that were able to stay healthy throughout the season because health was a huge problem for us all season. So hopefully we can, you know, keep those guys, bring those guys back, find some other guys that are going to stay healthy. We obviously have things that we need to address this off season, but I, but I believe it's not as big of a list as it was last off season. I think we figured some things out. I'm very happy to see this defense turn around knowing that Robert Sala is a defensive co- uh, coach. You know, Ulbrich in the beginning of the season, Ulbrich in the beginning of the season was, all, people wanted him fired before the season started. And this <laughs> defense turned around from one of the worst to one of the best. So that's great to see that that can happen. Now the question you know, for me going into next season is, can we turn this offense around the same way we turn this defense around? I think we can, because I think there were spots in the season where things were looking pretty good. 
the question is, like we talked about Mike McDaniel last week, about the NFL figuring him out in like six or seven or eight weeks. Did that happen to the Jets? Did Was it a void of talent issue? Was it a quarterback issue? Or were people just to figure out, able to figure out Michael Floor's young mm-hmm. offense because he's been OC for two seasons? And by the midpoint of the season, people just knew there was that clip from the Seahawks game of, uh, was it Woolen, Tariq Woolen, talking about 84. Oh, 84, when he does this, I know what 84 is going to do this. You know, just calling out Corey Davis left and right. So it's just like, is that a player personnel issue? Is that a coaching issue? Either way, it needs to get fixed. So I'm hoping that in this coming offseason, we can fix, fix the offense like we fixed the defense last season. But we'll yes. see. Some answers were were definitely solved. Like the cornerback questions that was solved, finding a wide receiver, at least, you know, a, a top one or two, you know, and Garrett Wilson, that was kind of resolved. But honestly, what's frustrating is we kind of have the same exact questions from like from last year for the most part, right? It's O-line. It's I, quarterback. I, of course, quarterback. Go go off, Alex. What are your thoughts on, the, on this year? I think to both of you guys, we solved a lot of things. Look, defense, look, Robert Sala is a good coach, in my opinion, to turn that defense from being... That's a hot bottom. take, apparently, now, Alex. That's a hot take now. It's crazy. It's nasty. It's na- First of all, it's nasty business to to even, <laughs> like, say, look, I get that it ended in a way that no one wanted to see. Like, I'm not happy about this either, all right? I'm not happy that we didn't have a touchdown for three games, okay? <laughs> but at the same time, I could say, you know what? I look at the scoreboard, and I'm like, huh, besides the BS safety, it's nine points, is it not? You know what I mean? Like, you could talk 11, 9, whatever it may be. The defense did its thing. We went from a bottom-of-the-barrel defense with a defensive head coach, by the way, to then being one of the top defenses. Yeah, it has its issues with guarding tight end, running backs out of the backfield, so forth. And the safeties need to be improved, for sure. Those are the weaknesses. But they were still a top defense, okay? They were, they were, they were a legit defense. The thing that held them back was offense. Okay, and we can discuss whether that's Michael Four and his coaching, as Greg pointed out. You, it, we know the biggest issue. It's Zach Wilson. All right, it, for the Jets, they got to go out there and go find somebody. There's it's not you, it's not Zach. It's the quarterback position. So let's talk about this game, right? Because as everybody saw, it's not Zach. Hold on, it's not Zach. What? What do you mean by that? Like the the issue isn't him. The issue is us. You know what I mean? The issue is the Jets' quarterback position, right? Like because like even if it's not Zach Wilson. It's not like we have another answer here, right? right. And you, you saw with Washington, like Carson Wentz got hurt or whatever. Well, Tyler Heineke was able to come in and win some games to get this team on a roll. Like, it's not necessarily just Zach Wilson. Like, John, not to cut you off, we saw Joe Flacco this past week at Miami. Yo, Joe Flacco, good, good grief, man. Yeah. You Dude. can't tell me when you go out there, you throw 33 times, have 18 completions for a— how do you throw 33 times? This has to be like some voodoo magic I'm watching, man, because uh, you throw 33 times and you only get 149 yards. No, but dude, when Flacco plays, I mean, the man throw, throws 30 to 50 times every time he plays. It's crazy. And then Zach Wilson throws 13. <laughs> like, like, it, my it, guy, it like, how, how is it? How is it that a quarterback in today's day and age throws 33 times and can't even get to 200 yards? It's crazy. Like, how does that work? Not good pa- they're not good passes, apparently. They're not catching them. So just so, you know, just as everyone thought, this game was about to be for the playoffs. This game was going to be for the last seed in the wild card. Uh, it's going to be a crazy matchup. Uh, Could have been an A seed. <laughs> the rematch, right? And this time, it's going to be the, the court. Everyone's going to be healthy. We had the eight seed stuff that you talk about, the almighty eight seed from who officially is on my on my hot seat now. Michael Flo- Mikey, commenter, Florio, you're officially on my hot seat. Everything you say is now fan fiction, unless it's a, unless you're just reporting news because it was really the the league said they didn't even contemplate that. This guy wrote three essays on it, so you know what I mean. So what what are we what are we doing here? So that was annoying. But Flacco versus Thompson was an absolute abomination to football. Like uh, Flacco's post game interview was amazing. Actually, he was talking about. I mean, he knew it was his last one ever, so he's just kind of talking about, like, the team, the direction of the team. And he's like, you know, sometimes ugly football is good football. <laughs> I, I get it, dude, but that was just so gross. Even I the, get Quin- the Jimmy Butler. Even the Quincy what? Williams breakup on Tyreek Hill. Like, I was so lucky. <laughs> like, it was sick. I was really happy. It was so lucky. The, the way that they scored at the end there, 
with the voodoo. You talk about voodoo magic. <laughs> where was that horse collar? That horse collar was literally voodoo magic. <laughs> I don't know where it came from. Uh, there, was, there was a couple penalties like that uh, in this game. So <sighs> I'm glad that we Why lost. Why do the rest hate us, John? Dude, this is the best thing that could ever happen for us is that we lost this game. I would be livid if we lo- if we won this game. And it I mean, I don't I don't know if we need much analysis on this game besides Ruckert was a beast. He came you out know, that block. A couple yeah, blocks. Block. Shout out to Nania who 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 uh who did that all 22 for us real quick. Um Ruckert looks like a real player and we have CJ and Con- and um and Tyler Conklin for the next year at least. So the tight the tight end room is, is is all wrapped up. Maybe we'll get somebody as an undrafted free agent, but the the, the tight end room looks good, especially with Ruckert there. You mentioned running backs. It was the Ty Johnson game. Let me ask you this real quick. You know, like let's just let's just let's just start off hot here. <laughs> Are you bringing Ty Johnson back, Alex? I'll go first if you want. I I have a you tough can go time. First, man. I have a tough time quitting Ty Johnson. I did it in the <laughs> off season. He got to you. He you gets guys... you every every last game of the season, Greg. It's Not... people like you. That's why he performs like that. He had a couple games during the season. He had a couple plays during the season. In the off season, we talked about. Who was it? It was Ty Johnson, Bam Knight, and Tevin Coleman or something like that. Yeah. Like, who are you keeping? I said Ty Johnson, and it's just like we're we're back here looking at it. And it's just like again, Bam Knight, I think, is better. I'll give him that. I think Bam Knight definitely proved it this season down the stretch for sure. But dude, he you should, he's definitely he should definitely sorry to cut you off. Yeah. Definitely needs to be number two on that depth chart. It has to be Brees Hall, Bam Knight. Uh I think so, too, because Michael Carter, I just don't know what happened to him. I don't know what happened to the kid at UNC that was just running all over the place. He always had space. He was, maybe he was just way better athlete paying, playing lesser opponents. ACC. But, <laughs> yeah, he's, like, playing Virginia and Florida State when they stink. So, it's like, okay, maybe he's just killing people. But in the NFL level, Michael Carter's just not being able to do it. I thought he was going to be able to catch the ball a lot more. I thought he was going to be shifty and be able to get up and down the field i just don't know if he's banged up i don't know if it's just been a tough couple seasons with injuries and not having a consistent offensive line play not a consistent quarterback play so like you guys have been saying all season they know to you know stack the box against us so he just has a a bad matchup every time he goes out there but bam knight was able to get it going i could see bam knight being the two on the depth chart for sure but, I, yeah, I think Ty Johnson, you keep him around again. Again, you need three or four running backs in this lead. I'm more concerned about James Robinson. I don't know if he's around next season. No way, dude. Yeah. So they, they he, had, he had that incentive, uh, the conditions to be of a sixth to the fifth round pick. Obviously, it's going to be a sixth round. He fell off with this team. Listen, I love Bam Knight. I don't think he's going to be second, though. I'm thinking he's going to be more three slash four. Uh, and kind of round out this running back room. Brees Hall, obviously the one if he's healthy. Michael Carter, I I think he's going to be on this team regardless. I would like to trade him if possible. Doesn't look like that's a real like a realistic thing. If you can get a fourth round pick for him, you do that in two seconds. I just don't think that's really in the cards here. So mm. I think it's going to be Brees Hall, Michael Carter, Bam Knight. And I would really, really in like that order. to add. In that order on the depth chart. Until I add Jeff Wilson, add mm-hmm. Jeff Wilson as a free agent knows the system. He's going to be cheap. You add him in there, and he'll you know, Bam Knight. You could always move. He's undrafted free agent. You can be like, dude, you're going to be fourth now. You're going to be practice squad. You know what I'm saying? He really doesn't have a say here. So you could throw that, and then you put Jeff Wilson there as the quote unquote third because you can't hurt Michael Carter's feelings, right? So Michael Carter is the quote unquote one until Brees Hall gets back. Jeff Wilson will be the two. And then obviously after the first possession in preseason, it'll be like, oh, okay. <laughs> We're gonna flip that when it's game time. And Jeff Wilson and Michael Carter kind of split until Brees Hall comes back. And then Bam Knight will be there when we have an inevitable injury at running back because it's happened every single year <laughs> for the last since Curtis Martin. <laughs> so it's just inevitable at this point, which is why you don't use a first round pick on a running back, and that's why you don't overspend on a running back in free agency. That's why I like someone like Jeff Wilson. So that kind of wraps up the the, the, the running back room. The tight end room, I, I I think, is good. The wide receivers are good. Well, Garrett Wilson, this last game, I just got to say, while we're still kind of in the 
a little Seattle. bit on the recaps of, dude, why does it take us four quarters to figure out just throw the guy the ball every single time? There was a stretch there with Joe Flacco where was every possession, every pass was just throw it to Garrett Wilson, throw it to Garrett Wilson, throw it to Garrett Wilson. And he was making highlight plays after highlight plays in a meaningless 6-6 football game in Week 18. Like, I just don't get why it takes us so long to figure this things out. Like, why wasn't that the game plan for, in the first quarter, the second quarter? Or, or versus Seattle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't the ball every time. Uh, I don't. That drove me nuts. Dude. I guess I know, this is where you start questioning. Is so bad. Is, this is where you question: Is it the quarterback issue of like not finding him fast enough, or is it a Mike Lafour issue in who is your hot receiver? You know, your number one receiver on each designated play, right? So this is this is where you can have that conversation of like: Is it a Michael Four issue? Yeah. Although I think Connor Hughes said something very, I mean, are, are we saving the Michael Four conversation or can I just like hop into this? You can like, do whatever you want, man. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm, I'm talking. I'm, I'm gonna go after you and, and get into wide receiver stuff. So go off on the floor. So the thing with Four, right? Like Connor Hughes was talking about it post game on SNY yesterday, and like you could put you could put issues on the quarterback, on the offensive coordinator, but if you get rid of Michael Four. You know, there is probably going to be a playoff mandate the following season just because of the jump that this team has made, right? Whether mm-hmm. it's said out loud, it's probably definitely going to be internally because it is now 12 seasons that we've gone without even being in the playoffs. It's the longest active drought in the NFL. And I know as a, as a fan, if you're Woody Johnson, anybody, you watch this team and you're like, we were competing for a good portion of the season. What happened, right? Like, regardless if you're going to back to Zach Wilson, you got Mike White, all these other things. There's decisions <laughs> that were made to have like Joe Flacco back there. Dude, right? it's so sad when you say so, that out loud. It honestly hurts my heart. Like you, you just named me Mike White, Zach Wilson, and Joe Flacco. Like say that out loud. You know, like, like it's that's disgusting, bro. Do you know what's even worse? Rosenblatt tweeted out the stats for the quarterback passing touchdowns, and it did not even change within the last week. He was like six touchdowns for. Um, who was it, like six touchdowns for Zach Wilson, five TDs for uh, I think it was uh, Flacco, what four four TDs for Mike White, and then you had uh, what was it, or it could have been the other way around, and then one TD for Braxton Berrios. Yeah. Oh total- my God, I can't believe you just said his name. Okay, so we're talking about the wide <laughs> receiver room, but, right. but finishing up, finish, finish, finish up what I'm saying about Michael Four. I don't see the Jets firing somebody because then if there's a play- playoff mandate, you're giving that offensive coordinator one year with that one head coach to make a difference. So I think we're going to keep with Michael Four, unless you're giving Robert Sala more time, then I could see a change. But if it's a, if it's a playoff mandate, I don't see what situation is who's going to come here as offensive coordinator. Like I'm going to take that one shot with a different quarterback next season to get everything under, under wraps. And we're going to do that it makes more sense to build on what you have already with the guys in this, in this like building from like wide receivers you're about to get into next, then do that. So I, I see if we're four staying, for, even though with his flaws, he's got to do something though. He's got to go take something like, I don't know, like continuing education, John, to go figure out how to improve his game. I, I mean, listen, I, I agree with you and I agree with that logic. And for that reason, I don't think LaFleur is going to get fired. Calabrese might get fired. However, they might just not fire anybody and add Gary Kubiak, just like an offensive assistant head coach, the quarterback guru, keep the floor and keep keep the things going. And I'm all, I want to talk wide receivers. I want to talk Berrios, and it fits right into the floor because, dude, listen, the floor you could draw up the play, but like <laughs> if the ball's in Berrios's hand in the end zone in Minnesota, you you you, you catch it. You, you clap your hands together and you catch, and you catch the ball. Like you, you, and that's not Lafleur. I mean, there was the next game too, where he drops that you know that fourth down, that third down in the red zone. Like that's not Lafleur, right? So let me ask you guys real quick. I mean, this we're gonna get into more episodes, more in depth stuff. This is technically the reaction, but the reaction has to do with the off season, man. Like, what are we doing with the bottom of this wide receiver chart? Like, do you guys see Berrios, Mims coming back? I personally, I don't even think it's a question. I don't think Corey Davis is coming back. What are your thoughts real quick on mm-hmm. on, on the, just on our, our guys uh, in the end of the wide receiver room? Yeah, I think I think Corey Davis is gone. I think there's a shot. Berrios is gone. 
Um, Say five mil from Berrios, ten and a half from uh, Corey Davis. Yeah, and just Mims, maybe, you know, Jeff Smith, maybe. Here's the thing. Mims, it, it makes no sense to get actually rid of him. Like, you have to trade. Like, it doesn't make sense to cut him. Yeah, and there was, there was points of this season where everyone wasn't talking about Mims like it was last season. And he had some good games. He had some good plays. And the, the team was terrible on offense. And he was still able to have a couple good games, a couple good possessions. And some good catches. So, you know, I think I think there's an opportunity for him, especially if Corey Davis is gone. You know, he's I our think... savior. He was a little bit our savior at some points in this year. Yeah. And maybe we still need to bring in another wide receiver, whether it's a veteran, whether Definitely. it's through the draft. But still, I, I don't see the point in cutting anyone if they're really cheap on a cheap rookie contract. You know, what's the point of, of cutting someone that knows the system, knows how we operate, and has shown flashes of some good things? Yeah, I mean that's that that for me that's Romo Duns if we're doing rookie from Washington, or that's DJ Chark if we can get him as a wide receiver to kind of supplement Corey Davis. I don't think we're gonna like really spend big anywhere. Yeah. What do you think, Alex? I definitely see Corey Davis being gone because injuries, the drop passes, <sighs> being your number one wide receiver, and he's not. You gotta move on. You got Garrett Wilson who definitely you I guess at the beginning of the season, it's funny, right? Where we talked about having all these guys, right? Because you think about injuries. You think about having a lot of playmakers on the offense. This may be too many guys in the kitchen because as we're seeing, as Greg alluded to, or not even alluded to, but noted, uh, we, didn't get, we don't get Garrett Wilson the ball until the end of the game. So maybe in this case... You got to get rid of somebody. Subtraction by addition by subtraction at this point, right? So you, you remove Corey Davis. You give Garrett Wilson all those targets. You still have Elijah Moore. You know, you got Braxton Barrios. I think you got to go out and go find somebody else. Unless you really believe in Jeff Smith like that. Um, well, Jeff Smith is a free agent too. Yeah, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Like you could resign him. You could try to resign him. Because no, no one's running out there be like, yeah, we're we're gonna need some Jeff Smith action right now. Listen, as a Jets fan, it's an abomination that Braxton Berrios is a Pro Bowl special teamer. It's an abomination. Like I I I, I don't know how on earth that that that's that would be worse than D Rose starting in the All Star game. By like the he, way, he got like the eighth most votes <laughs> as a point guard. That like that would be ninth. more egregious. I think it's ninth, ninth, ninth. Not, like that would be more egregious. He no got two hundred thousand by opening day, which is insanity. Braxton right, Berrios know. won. He won the vote. That's crazy, dude. He stinks all year. I mean, I would rather take that five million and give it to Nixon from uh, Green Bay, who's also a free agent. Give give him the fi- give him five million dollars one year. <laughs> like, you know, like I'm I'm down with that. Um. By the way, just going back to the stats I read from uh, Zach Rosenblatt. Here it is: Jets passing touchdown leaders, which did not change within a week. Zach Wilson six, Flacco five, Mike White three, Braxton Berrios one. That is nasty business, bro. Braxton Berrios. Disgusting. It's All tough, right. man. I know from preseason, John, we did the preview episode. The touchdown props for most quarterbacks are 30 or 35 passing touchdowns. <laughs> we couldn't get 35 as or we couldn't get 30 as a team. Never mind one individual quarterback. Yeah, I mean that's the that's the sad truth, but uh, at the end of the day, the offensive line on the 16? on the <laughs> Stop. The offensive guys, 16 the offensive, as a team? <laughs> the offensive line, dude, was 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 a preseason what is game. Happening? It was a preseason game, dude. I can't believe they put Flacco behind. That's that's male practice, what they did to Flacco. They literally gave him a preseason offensive line in this game versus uh versus Miami. I, I'm surprised thing. we didn't see I am surprised we didn't see a Strevler package. Like it's this is what I hate. It was Flacco's about, last game. They're like, go out there, do your thing, bro. You're hanging it up after the season. They're, I, they're like legit not trying to win. Yeah, it's like, dude, just go out there. Uh, Joe is Douglas this, this is, is like, I drafted what, you and you made me my career. Like, go out there and do your thing. Is this tanking? Is this what tanking actually looks like? <laughs> I think last game was legit what tanking looks like in the NFL. I legit because everyone's trying to get either their incentives or if you're close to being hurt or you're free agent, you're not even coming close to the field. The fact it, that we had to watch a field goal affair. For most of this game. And by a field goal affair, I mean like 
That's a it was a penalty in field goal affair. They literally need a penalty. I called that too in the pre the pregame. I called field goals galore. I just thought there was gonna be at least a touchdown or two. One at least right, that was a thing, right? Yeah. I said I said four, 2014 <laughs> Jets. You said yeah. nineteen was 13, 13 Jets, and yeah. we got nowhere even close. Well, we actually I guess you got you got closer than that with yeah. the thirteen. I just <laughs> needed a touchdown. Yeah, I need a touchdown from each team. I would have been there. But yeah, it was, it was tough. It was tough. Uh, yeah, I think I think at the end of the season, coaches just throw veteran guys out there and it's like put something out on tape if you're staying around, go out there and have some fun if you're not. You know, there's not there. If you go down the list of like QBs that played this week, it's a bunch of veteran guys out there, or it's your young rookie guy like Sam Howell down in Washington. It's like, all right, go out there, kid who hasn't played at all, even though it's week 18, and show us something what you got. We know what we got with Strebler. We know he's not the option. Like he's not the fe- you know the future of the franchise. So, however. Greg, he did just sign a future today. He's officially on the Jets for next year. And so I'm hyped about that. But speaking of next year, though, just real quick on the offensive line, Mekhi Becton today, looking good, skinny, yep. talking about how he's, he's ready to come back. Lincoln Tomlinson, whether you like it or not, he's going to be there next year. Hopefully we can restructure, save some money. But he's going to be the left guard next year. The center is free. The right guard is free, I guess. AVT says he's going to be 100%, 100% by camp. So I guess we'll pencil in AVT as a right guard. The center is free. Maybe Makai plays right tackle. We're definitely drafting a tackle. Looks like Max Mitchell might end his career. Look like Dwayne Brown might retire. So that's really what we're looking at. We'll we'll get into all that in depth uh, during the season. But let's just switch over to the defense real quick. Of course, the number one. If you say if you say Jets defense, you think two things right away. You think Sauce Q-Will <laughs> and Sauce. That's it. So Sauce had a great game versus Tyreek Hill, but Q Will is absolutely dominant. Man, he it's been insane. He he's he's just so damn good. He's on his last year of his contract. He's looking for an extension. Already whispers of a holdout. He wants to get his extension. I'm sure Joe Douglas wants to wait. There's going to be some tension there. He also is going to want to break the market. But to be honest with you, the faster you pay Q Will, the more you save. Uh, because the, there's a couple of D tackles coming out, and they're going to keep breaking that market. Yeah. So he, so Q Will's going to set it. Just pay him now. Look at Red Van Fleet from from the Raptors. Is you know he's already looking for a new con for a new contract. It was cheap. Look at Jalen Brunson from the Knicks. I know we're talking about different leagues, but it's just like the last contracts that you know showed up <laughs> came in my brain right away. Like it, they get cheaper as soon as you sign them. Okay, uh, because the cap, especially for the NFL, we know the cap is going up. Next Look year. at Josh Allen, right? Josh Allen signed a mega deal two years ago, a year ago, and, and it was it was before his contract was over. It's like, dude, let's just resign new deal now. And now a year or two later, he's like the fifth highest paid, sixth highest paid quarterback. It's like, oh, you have Josh Allen. The chances are odds on MVP favorite on the odds are favorite to win the Super Bowl, and he's the fifth best con- or the fifth highest contract. That's great. Four other guys, five other guys are getting paid more than this guy. And think about it, man. Like going back in time, consider we have and we have that guy who broke the market not too long ago after winning a Super Bowl, Mr. Joe Flacco. Remember when he won? Yeah. Broke that market, and then look what happened after that. You know what I mean? So, to you, your know, point, you know who's John, under? You know who's under Josh Allen? Like Josh Allen is six. You know who's fifth? Who? Patrick Mahomes. Remember when Patrick Mahomes yeah. got signed? It was oh my god, you giving up the whole franchise for Patrick Mahomes? He bought the Royals. That's how rich he is, right? Like he bought a steak, and he's. He's fifth right now. It's Aaron Rodgers, Russell, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun, Deshaun Watson, Watson, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Derek Carr. All bargain, people, that, by the way, values. All... I'm, I don't know about Derek Carr, but the the two in between the five and the six are definitely bargain values. <laughs> just saying, you got to pay your players, man. So and to, your, to your point, John, just real quick to wrap that up. Those are all people that have signed contracts after Josh Allen. All the people ahead of him are after him. So, like to your point, sign him now, pay him what he wants. It will be cheaper by the end of the off season, and it will Literally. definitely be cheaper in two or three years. Literally, there's 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 three ridiculous D tackles that are free agents. Like you just this year, so they're yeah. gonna get paid this year, and it's gonna screw you for next season. What do you have to pay? We're gonna franchise tag him. You're gonna do this whole thing. Don't do not do this with Quinn Williams. But on the other side here, his brother is a free agent. That's an interesting one. He's talking about taking a pay cut with, and loyalty, and then he and then at the end, by the end of the conversation, he's talking about how he needs to get what's earned. <laughs> so we're, who knows what's going on there? Hopefully, he gets a Chris Smith, Jr. Smith contract with Q Will. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But speaking of this specific game, Carl Lawson kind of had a decent game. Turns out the news is he had a second uh, secret Achilles injury this year, according to Connor Hughes. 
Uh, and when you say it like that, he had the best season ever. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he had he had he he was he was had an all all pro season. So we're talking about cutting him for the last eight weeks because it's going to save us fifteen mil because we gave him thirty mil to do nothing the last two years essentially. Turns out, I think he's going to stay. The Jets love him. Uh, I think he's going to stay. Bryce Hall had some minutes, uh, cornerback. I, I think he's a goner. Bryce Huff, he's a free agent. He played some good minutes. That's basically the defense for this game. Um, CJ Mosley went down, came back up. So that's about it. Quan Alexander, he's a free agent. What, what, do, what are you guys' thoughts on on this game's defense, or on, on your thoughts going forward with this defense? Just, you know, this kind of rapid reaction of the season. Don't tinker with it too much. You got a lot of the you got a lot of the bones. You got a lot of the structure there between like obviously your cornerback situation is fine. That's not changing. Your linebacker core could be improved, right? Between Quincy, Quan. <clears throat> CJ's still around, right? Like he's got a, how many more years does he have on his contract? So we restructured him. So now there's right. two more years, and it's right. possible he could be restructured again if we want more money. Uh, Joe Douglas made an interesting comment in his post game pre- in his postseason press conference today, talking about the Jets are going to have a lot of cap space. Right now, the Jets do not have a lot of cap space, so there's the, you know something's got to give. So yeah, so I mean, I, I I've been playing with the cap a little bit, like you know maybe like uh, changing up uh, how Mosley's paid, changing up how Tomlinson's paid, changing up how Lawson's paid. Making a couple million dollar cuts at the end of the roster, gotta saving think about ten the and a half. Got to think from, about the offensive line too, since that's like the heavily invested area. That's probably got to change. Dwayne Brown retirement, it will be huge for us. You know, you know, you know what I mean. Like we, we, we do need to, if Mackay Beckton actually plays to his all pro level that we know he's capable of, he's on a rookie deal. You know what I mean? That'd yeah. be amazing if he could be our right tackle and be a beast. And we just, you know, or our left tackle at this point, we don't, we have nothing. <laughs> you know what I mean? With like no we, tackles. <laughs> we have nothing. Yeah, there's a there's, there's there's a couple nice ones in the free agent market. I wonder if like maybe McGlinchey right tackle he might come, or maybe Orlando Brown pay him a zillion dollars. Like we're gonna get into all this stuff at the end of the season. I know we're like, we're kind of back and forth here, but it's really exciting. I mean, we we're all crying about we wanted Joe Thune, and then we're all like, thank God the Jets didn't pay for him. And now all I'm listening to in the last couple of weeks is how Joe Thune and, and the Chiefs offensive line is amazing. And it's like yeah. all of our guys, Creed Humphrey, who we wanted to draft, they told us, no, we had a good center. Joe Thune, who we wanted to sign, they said, no, he's too expensive. We're like, what are we talking about? <laughs> like, they have the best offensive line. That's exactly what we want. <laughs> so we're going to get into all that stuff. And there's so many decisions about payment on the defensive side, right? Sorry, we are, I want to tangent you asked about CJ Mosley. So I'll go off there. But it's like the, we have the Knicks situation here, too, where it's like we have minutes – there's only limited minutes. We need Bryce Huff to play. We need Jermaine Johnson to play. Like, are we going to resign Huff? Uh, well, John Franklin Myers, is he going to be there? What are we going to do with Rankins? Are we going to resign him? Solomon Thomas, free agent. He killed the last couple of weeks. Big leader in the locker room. Like, there's so many big decisions to be made on the defensive side of the ball. I know you're saying keep it status quo. Don't make it. Don't make changes. But the reality is, man, the con- their contracts are up. Or they're due so much money and you can get rid of it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so many people are, are on, like, this, like, turmoil. The thing is, what I'm saying is that you got to keep the bones. You got, like, when you, if you're Joe Douglas, you got to go back and be like, all right, who are the big guys that I have to keep on this team? Obviously, it's like Lawson. You got to keep Q. Will. You got to you gotta keep, uh, you know, you're going to keep C.J. Mosley, even though I know you guys' feelings about him. You know, obviously, Sauce and D.J. Rear are going to be here. You know, I'd probably bring back Quan. Just because he was a, a good like signing on the cheap, like you don't. I would that. love that. Yeah, you know, probably Joe Douglas is best signing. You think? DJ, I think DJ Reed might be the best. Oh signing. yes, yes, yes. DJ yes, Reed yes. for sure, but Quan's up there, man. Healthy, Quan is up there. Played big minutes, made big plays, cheap contract. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, you also got Jermaine Johnson too. Like you got to think about who's like he's a rookie. He's going to want to make take a big step. So when you think about the edge, you know, even though they did sign Franklin Myers, like you got to consider him too, and like. How do you restructure there? Do you make some trades to offload some of these guys to give guys opportunities? We need a safety. That's the stuff that 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 a we need, we need, we need safety. <laughs> yeah, at least two safeties. I'm I'm holding my foot down this year. Um, you know, obviously that Jordan that Whitehead's a change. question mark though, guys. We didn't Jordan Whitehead. We could save seven and a half mil if we caught him only two million dead cap. He's a possibility. He made most of the interceptions. <laughs> <laughs> we, that sounds great, but we haven't had an interception in eight weeks. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it sounds good. By the way, uh, Sauce said he's going to get 10 interceptions next year. Book it. Dude, the way, not to bring it back to the game, because I feel like we've kind of moved on from that, the way he was tormenting Tyreek Hill, I was like, dude, I cannot <laughs> wait to watch this matchup, hopefully for the next bazillion years, because I think Sauce is going to win it nine times out of ten. His his comments is, were so annoying. I, I it made me love him even more. He's like, I don't know why they get so mad. I don't know why they get so annoyed. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, because you're Dude. pulling them. You're probably talking smack the whole way. We see Absolutely. pushing him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I love it. He's he's taller, he's longer, he's just as fast. He's ready to go, man. And I love it. I, I love the the as a rookie coming out and being able to jar people. Like if you saw there was a clip going around of him jar with Tyreek Hill and he was coming back to the 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 defensive huddle. The defensive guys were around when he was walking over, and the smiles on the veterans' faces when he's just jawed with them <laughs> was so funny to watch. They were like, Yeah, talk that shit, talk that shit. They were just laughing so hard and smiling he's ear nasty. to ear. Dude, he's he's the real deal, so between well, him so, and like you got between rookies of the year, you got to put Garrett Wilson and Sauce up there, man. Sure. Just to the, you what, know, this is where what's so cool is now players are gonna actually like just as much as you wouldn't want to join the Jets offense. Yeah, that exact same energy on the other side. Every every uh, action has the opposite reaction. You want to join the Jets defense, but the yeah. thing no, is, but, I actually I will actually push back on the offense. I think if you're a quarterback. And you see what Garrett Wilson, as a rookie, got over a thousand yards with, with nobody a carousel. With <laughs> Chase Trevler, he's doing he's doing DeAndre Hopkins things. All right, DeAndre Hopkins for when he was on, on the Texans didn't have legit quarterbacks for a good period of time, man. No, you're gonna hear that name a lot in this offseason because he's gonna be available, and so is Keenan Allen. But I digress for now. <laughs> but you you triggered me. I'm just he's, saying, on my, though, he's on my mind, D-Hop. He's on my mind. I'm just saying, what Wilson did should not be... It is like, you look at it like, oh, cool, we got over a 1,000 yards. Haven't done that since Keyshawn Johnson, right? So you're like, hmm, that's cool. But then when you think about it, you're like, he did that with Flacco. He did that with Zach Wilson. He did that with Mike White. You got to give some props to that, man. I don't even know if Trevor got him a pass in there. But like still, I think that, give him oh, no, no, uh, I, no, I think he definitely completed a pass to him. I'll check it. But who was that? Who was that? Uh, huge pass that was to CJ, right? CJ yeah. Uzama. Yeah, yeah, John. To finish your point though, like to to what you were saying, like if you watch was a Von Miller after the Jets played the Bills the first time, talking about Sauce. It's like you start getting those guys, like veterans around the league. Not saying Von Miller is going to come to the Jets because he's tied up with Buffalo, but like those marquee pass rush guys, those marquee defensive guys, they're like, yo, I want to be on, I want to be on this guy's team. It makes I my be on life this easier, guy's man. Life. Yeah, exactly. It goes he's, both ways. He's you know what locking I mean? like him down so I can get to the quarterback and make my. $12 million in bonuses over the course of this contract for the next four or five years. So and that's that thing, right? Because yeah. you think it goes both ways too. So like if sauce is doing his job and then you have like DNs doing their job and outside linebackers, like it just, they all, it works, man. And same thing with when you look at Garrett Wilson offensively, that's why I got to push back a little bit. If you're a quarterback and you're looking for a team that you, that needs, that has weapons that you can just jump right into and be like, as baseline, it will be functional. I don't know how you can't look at the Jets and be like, all right, they're going to get Brees Hall coming back. That guy is going to take a load off my shoulders. Then I got Garrett Wilson, who's just a playmaker. If I get to Elijah Moore, who showed that he could still be a, a reliable wide receiver when involved, and then you got your tight end room. You, you, John, tight you end room is my favorite room again. So, like, you got, you got Conklin, you got <laughs> CJ. You know, all you got to do is, like, if you have that healthy offensive line that we're supposed to have at the beginning of the season – I think a quarterback would want to come here and be like, yes. I got a name is, for you. That is it. Is it Lamar I got, Jackson? I got a name for you. Nope. I don't know if you guys want to end it here, if you if you have more stuff you want to talk about. Go but ahead. I want to talk about the quarterback stuff because— Oh, wait, wait, wait. If it's quarterback—actually, I, I, I will have to give—we have to give John his four for this one. We have to give John his four for this one. The punter. Oh. <laughs> oh, before we get into that, yeah, dude, before... if, Braden Man is, if Braden Man's on this team— we we're gonna have we're gonna have a real issue going going to he had the greatest game of all time versus Miami. I was gonna say I he was, was so coughing mad. quarter dog. He was setting him inside the five. He was I killing was so it. mad, dude. <laughs> he was doing the Madden challenge from the video game where you're getting it in the darts. Dude, every, he's getting are you kidding me? But but 
But just one, just one you needed him most. He yep. came through. He came through with the shank right at the end. <laughs> like right when you needed him. Right when the, you needed to give the Dolphins field position, he came through. Listen, I'll I'll do a write up. I'll do a write up. I'll put it on Jet Press. There's a we we have a type. We have from 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 my boy Lackey Edwards. We drafted him, and we drafted Braden Mann, both Australian kickers. There's another Australian kicker. His freaking name is Tory Taylor. He's from Iowa. He wins games as a damn punter. We better we better get Tory Taylor. I, I'm buying a Tory Taylor jersey. And if it, and if he's 14 or something like that, it, they goes, dude. The tape he, is going over Darnold's jersey. I get. Oh you. my god, <laughs> give me that all day long. All right, and all right. That, quarterback now we can, now we can also go to the also. What do you guys think about Greg the Leg, free him. agent? Bring him back. Yeah, hell yeah. I think we not, fine. Let's not make the same mistake we did with Myers. All right. What's not? But, but is he Jason Myers? Because no. this guy, this guy shanked a a kick. It wasn't even close versus Jacksonville. I mean, come on, dude. Tough conditions he's, and he's, stuff. <laughs> All right, Zach still, Wilson. He was still. He was still. Uh, he was still money for most of the season, though. You got to give him credit for that. He was. He was. And, and for that, look, we have had issues. Myers was a Pro Bowler with the Jets, and we're like, nah, we're okay. Yeah. You know what I mean, like. And then look what look at the look at the situation that unfolded after that, right? Well, listen, well, listen, we we, we overcorrected and we signed Berrios because of that exact reason, and he sucks. Well, that's also because <laughs> that's also because we had the punt returner. Who was it? Um, Hardy. Was it was it Hardy doing punt returns? No, no. Roberts. I thought it was uh. Oh yeah, Andre Roberts. Yeah, or Andre Roberts. He no, he was he was our guy. So he also made the Pro Bowl that season too. You know what I mean? So like that's the overcorrection. That's a fact. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, we got rid of this guy too. What? 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 Sure. Just get get Zerline back. All right. Can we just? just fine. Do... That's fine. Don't make Greg, the easy. Now. Don't make the easy things hard. Yes. Zach Wilson. Zach Wilson puns back to back for Greg. All right. What? Do you, speaking of, what? What? Are, what are your thoughts on quarterback, man? End this off here on a hopefully positive note. I think it's a positive note. I've been racking my brain. I've been going through the Twitter files. I've been trying Uh-oh. to figure it out because, to your point, John, we're not getting Lamar Jackson. Uh, listen, listen. I, honestly, I'm starting. I'm starting to, to to change my tune a little bit there. But we'll talk about that a different day. All right. Well, yeah, we'll have to do a quarterback deep dive. I'm sure we'll do many in the off season. I was hyped for Lamar, whatever it might be. Lamar, Aaron Rodgers, I think those are no-brainers. If we can go get them, we go get them. The rest of the names we were listing off last episode or two episodes ago when we did it, nothing Wait, well, really— Wait, who's the other name? Who are you saying? No Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers, okay. Yeah, if if we can. I, I still think it's an overpayment, but whatever. Um, We were naming some names. None of them really stood out to me. None of them sounded great. This name, name names. This name, I think, is going to sound disgusting to some, but I think it might intrigue others. That's why I'm throwing it out there. How would you feel about Tyler Heineke running this offense oh next my season? God. Oh, oh, my God, Greg. That's what? bad. He can run the offense. He's not going to light the world on fire. You want you want Taylor Heineke and Zach Wilson to be the quarterbacks going into the season next year? <laughs> I don't want them to who, be, who, who but does, if we're not going to get Lamar, if we're not going to get the... Lamar and Aaron Rodgers, who are we going with? I have a question. In this scenario, right, where your, quarterback room, where your quarterback room is Heineke, Zach Wilson, and Streveler, who's playing garbage time in the preseason? <laughs> Streveler. <laughs> the guy who can't play like, football. I feel like they're all playing garbage time in the preseason. They're fighting for those garbage time minutes. I'm telling you, it's just a name I came across that I was like, hey, this might work. If we're, if we're not getting Derek Carr and we're not getting whoever else out there, I All feel right. like I feel like the name Tyler Heineke and Derek Carr to me is the same amount of ugh, and it, you're talking about a $15 million a year difference point, in contract. If you're going to be mentioning names like Tyler Heineke, just go get, like, why not Case Keenum then? Why not even say a guy like Case that? Case like 42. Taylor <laughs> Heineke's like, at least in his 20s. Oh, good grief. All right, all right. How about, Case how Keenum about this? was the backup quarterback to Jay Cutler on Denver, right? Or am I making that up? How yeah, about he we... was. <laughs> that was a long time That's ago. That was a long time ago. All right, uh, let me give you guys two names that maybe aren't on the, you know, on the, on the hot seat 
Like, for obviously, Lamar Jackson, Aaron Rodgers, we know about them. Of course. Even Jordan Love, we know about him. You know what I mean? We get it. Other than that, I think Tannehill's going to be cut this year. Can it, Tannehill's going to be 35, though, talking about old people. But he could fake or pretend to run an offense. He would be the best quarterback on our team since Brett Favre. <laughs> you know what I mean? So yeah. I don't know how much we could really, you know, poop. He's better than Sanchez, or maybe he just is Sanchez. If you really want to think about it, I'd probably put him around Sanchez, man. Yeah. So, it's, I mean, it would be nice. That'd be nice to have Mark Sanchez at the moment. If we have Mark Sanchez on this team this year, I think we're in the playoffs. <laughs> oh, my yeah. God. That's what I'm run. saying. If you told me back in 20, I was 11, 12, that this is the – You want I'd be Mark saying Sanchez? This, I yeah, know. Give, like, give me Mark Sanchez. <laughs> I'd be looking at myself like, what are you, What did you see that I have not seen? Yet? Well, yeah. you'd be right about one thing, Alex. Well, if that's the case, that means we have not made the playoffs in thir- in a decade and plus. So yeah. that would be correct. We have the longest drought. Can you imagine? And- can, you imagine can you imagine our younger selves like going back? Can you imagine seeing our younger selves back in time, like guys? You'll actually appreciate Mark Sanchez more than you think. I don't know what you're talking Dude, about. Old if you man. told me as a sophomore in college that for the next like 12 years the Jets are not going to make the playoffs, good luck. I, I don't know if I could have stuck this out the whole way. I would have been like, all right, like let me let me like let me just do something else for the next decade plus here. But here we are, man. We have to break the curse. We're stuck. I'm gonna give you another name, Tannehill. And listen, if Tom Brady is going to t- uh, to San Francisco, uh, oh, if he's going to San Francisco, oh. and Jimmy G's going to Vegas, and Derek Carr's going to Indy, really? what happens Derek to Brock Purdy? To what happens to Brock Purdy? He's, a, he's on the bench. He's he's taking over for Tom Brady when he's done. He's a rookie. I think I would trade for Brock Purdy. You know you know what's crazy? Whoa. You know what's cr- You know I saw what's uh, John might hate this. Uh you know I saw on the t- You would trade you know saw- for Mr. Irrelevant? Yeah, I'll give him I give I'll, yeah, I'll give him like a fourth round pick. Wow. How about this? He looks this out in the Twitter streets. Let me know your thoughts. Trade for Justin Fields. Oh my god, he doesn't never throw. Happened. He doesn't throw footballs. Would never happen. Uh, th- this has been this has been like the no- the biggest misnomer on Jets Twitter that I have seen is, oh my God, how did the Jets drive Zach Wilson over Justin Fields? You know how? Because they both stink. One only throws on weird, crazy plays, and one just runs. They both combined, they'd be amazing. Separately, they stink. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know how else to At put it. At this point, I'll take the guy that runs. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I don't want either Zach of them. Wilson right I mean, now. Yeah, hundred percent. If I could like trade one for one, no, I, I, no one would do that. Yeah, I would swap it, but I'm not and giving that, anything of value. You for say that out loud. I don't. That doesn't sound too crazy. What do you to mean? Why the, hell, why the hell would the Bears do that? I mean, I don't know why the Bears would do. That. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah, that's do. what I'm saying. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, oh, it doesn't that, make sense for the other team to do that. Nah, like, Bears I, are trading. I'm not adding a pick to it. Yeah, then the Bears are trading their pick and keeping Fields and building out a team. They're starting from nothing. Yeah, shout out to the Bears for taking correctly. They did a great job this year of of playing really good games and losing at the end. But yo, this has been this has been a fun season for the Jets, man. I, we were all over the place on this post game episode. There's so much happening between the you know the post game stuff, the salary cap. We I, we've been in the off season for a week already. I'm excited for the draft stuff, playoffs coming up. Last note, real quick, what do you guys got? AFC, NFC. Coming out? Yep. What's your Super Bowl? Buffalo Bills. Me and Minnesota Vikings. I like that. Bills Vikings. Dalvin Cook uh, injury really like hurts my soul. It'll be though. interesting for this reason. Uh, why am I blanking on his name? Wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. Why am I blanking on his name? Diggs. Davis. Diggs. Stephon Diggs. Bigs Day because of Vikings? Okay, makes sense. Yep. What do you got, Greg? It's really tough to pick anyone but the Buffalo Bills right now. I mean, they definitely have... Uh, a hot, Some momentum? Like, yeah, they have like a higher power on their side. Like they... <laughs> I mean, what they've seen and what they've been through is but so dude, much greater they, than football. Yes, but they had a close game with the Patriots, and the Patriots stink. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Objectively, right? Like, just yeah. like on the surface, like it was a tough game without two touchdowns from Naheem Himes. 
one of them you're saying was from a higher power. Yeah. <laughs> like, they, they're not winning that game. They just, have a I mean? vi- they just have a vibe about them that's tough to compete with. So I'm, I'm not going to pick the Bills. It's tough not to. But it's also not that hard to pick the Chiefs. I think yes. it's Chiefs 49 or I think it's rematch. pretty tough. To, I think it's actually it could be tough to pick the Chiefs in all honesty. Why? What's what's wrong with the Chiefs? I, I, I'm I'm telling you right now, Chiefs is my pick, easy, hands down. They they barely lost a division game, dude. I, I they don't even lose in the division. It, it's crazy. What's what's your issue with the Chiefs here, Alex? I think they I think there is like <clears throat> something about like watching them. I feel like there's just the edge that Buffalo has. From okay. last season, but so it's not I mean? really about the you not liking the Chiefs. It's more no, you I like the Chiefs. The Bills. I, 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 it's not that I dislike the Chiefs. It's more so that the Bills, I think, are coming back with like some sort of energy. Yeah, I think there's a vendetta that they have. Like there's gonna there, we don't see it right now. Each week changes, but when, if if that's a matchup, Chiefs Bills, there's gonna be a vendetta on like from the Bills against the Chiefs. Like they're gonna go out there and want and want it more. I think the Chiefs. I feel like there's a, there's there's a there's like there's an aura with the Chiefs right now where it's just kind of like they feel like they're good, like they know they're good, but they're overestimating how good they are rather than Bills who might be a little bit more hungry or will come in and do something. I'm gonna be honest with you. I think you have the exact right analysis if you just flip the teams. Really, I, I think no one is talking about how good the Chiefs are. Chris Jones is, if not equal to Quinn and Williams, maybe better. Uh, he, he and all they do is they rush four, and their offense is insane. Did you see that little circus they did oh, yeah. going around the Rosie? Oh, Dude, yeah. they're playing with teams, bro. They're playing. They're playing around. But that's the thing. I think like I know they can, but oh, it's you, stuff that, like that hurt that. you. You didn't like. Yeah, that. Alex is talking about they're 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 banking on being able to do the Chiefs play. Everyone knows the yeah. Chiefs play. It's like oh, put Mahomes runs around and does a no look pass or an underhand you know, pass or a fifty yard touchdown. Arms, like, <laughs> Eventually like that it. runs out. Eventually that that comes back to bite you. It might not be the divisional round. Might not be you know the conference finals. It might be the Super Bowl. Whatever it is, but I, I just I don't know. Chiefs just look so damn good. It's so tough. Forty Niners I think look really good on the on the you NFC. Got Chiefs 49ers. Hey, remember, yeah, remember, a little rematch. That was a I great hate, Super Bowl. I hate saying it, but remember when the Chiefs were that dominant. Let's not forget when it was the Chiefs and the Rams. That was the whole Super Bowl prediction, right? Patriots came out of nowhere. Yeah. As much as I hated that. Oh, there's that's definitely going to be. We're n- none of us are going to get it right. That's for sure. But I, I will honestly, say this. Well, I will say this Greg. real quick, Alex. When you said that if the Chiefs play the Bills again, right away my gambling head is like I'm hammering the under. Everyone's going to expect an incredible game because of last season, and it's going to be like 13, 20. Can we actually? I know you. I know you. I know. I know you. I know that's probably going to happen just because you. When Greg says something, if you haven't checked out, <laughs> Greg says something. Especially when it comes to like teams like Jets, like going to lose two and a tapped in. He's clearly tapped in. That's why you got to check out winning picks weekly. But for me, I really need to see, just like from a fan, I need to see those type of playoffs again. Like last year was like top tier playoffs, man. Incredible. Top tier. I need that again. Where is that game? Is that neutral field? Chief, if it's Chiefs Bills? Yes. So I, I would guess it's going to be in Pittsburgh too. Pittsburgh. Why would it be neutral? Why would it be neutral? I think because I think Papa right, they, Goodell said so. Yeah, I think they voted <laughs> on it, right? And they said if it happens to be those two teams, because those were the two teams vying for the number one overall seed, oh, but because okay. the Bills gotcha. couldn't play. Gotcha, gotcha. I think gotcha. it's gonna be like AT and T Stadium. Like if the Cowboys are out or something like that, I think it's gonna. No, be like but they indoor. want outdoors because they because both teams are outdoor teams. Oh, uh, true. And, and it, it has bring to bring it to MetLife. <laughs> no, but that's too close to Buffalo. Yeah, kind of meet in the middle, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, something like that. Cincinnati. Also, that's where that Hamlin would, went to school. That would be disrespectful if they did it in Cincinnati after <laughs> one of those teams eliminated them. That oh, would be tough. Oh, yeah, that would be tough. That, that would, would be, be tough. tough. Um, I, you know, I, I I agree with your AFC pick. I think it's the Chiefs. I think they're under the radar somehow, some way. The Bengals would be my pick, but Lyle Collins out hurts. Bills would be my pick, but, like, they they don't. Yes, they have the emotion. They have the momentum. Josh Allen been playing like a knucklehead <laughs> in a couple of games, and they they don't really move the ball much. Uh, I don't know. I, I we'll see. I know it's like bad to say anything bad about the Bills. I bought the shirt. I bought the Hamlin shirt. It's coming in the mail. So like I don't know what to say. Like you know what I'm saying. Like the Bills are cool, but I just don't. I don't think they're gonna beat the Chiefs uh, or the Bengals honestly if they play them. And look out for the Jaguars. Anyway. I think they're going to win one or two playoff games. I really do. 
You lose yep. all credibility when you throw that little stuff in. I'm telling you, they yeah. might win one or two games. Doug Peterson, the Doug Peterson effect. All right. True. And NFC, Eagles falling off the cliff. I don't trust any of the other four teams, even though the Giants scare the hell out of me. i be honest with you. I'm not, I'm not picking any of the bottom four. It's really between the, the two teams that you guys chose. I have a bunch of futures on the Vikings, I'll be honest with you, because everyone keeps saying they stink, they stink, they stink, but they keep winning games. They're TCU. They're my TCU. Everyone just keeps saying, you guys suck, you guys lose, and then they, they just win every game. And they're it's loud in there, dude. It's so damn loud, and they're both purple, and it's so freaking loud in Minnesota. You act like you've been to that stadium before, John. It's loud, bro. It's loud. I you also to go act to... like you've been you've been on camera, made a debut for One Jets Drive. I wanted to go to KC so bad because I heard it was so loud, and I wanted to come. I was dying. I wanted to just do the trifecta of going to Green Bay, going to Minnesota, and going to Kansas City in one season. Oh, it's not gonna happen. Anyway, long story short, I'll take Chiefs 49ers in the rematch. But then, what's wrong with Brock Purdy, Greg? What's wrong with Brock Purdy if he's going to the Super Bowl, bro? He's good. He's just not. I don't. I don't want to trade for him. I want to trade like a third overall pick for the Mister Irrelevant. Not third for, overall, or a third round. round pick, or whatever, for a guy that looks good in Kyle Shanahan's offense, dude. If you go through the list of quarterbacks that have looked good in a Kyle Shanahan's offense, half of the guys over the last three seasons aren't in the league anymore. I don't even remember their <laughs> names. But there was there was three or four week stretches where these guys were just walking off the street. And everyone's getting you gotta pick him up in fantasy. You got you gotta bet him here, you gotta bet him there. <laughs> Kyle Shanahan is just a mastermind of offense, and he can if you're good, he can make you look great. I think Brock Purdy's good. I just don't think someone like that comes in and fixes our problems. <laughs> okay, that's fair, that's fair. Well, on that note, this is probably a good place to end the Jets episode of the Nick Jets, etc. podcast. Thank you all for tuning in for another Jets episode. You all know what to do. Please make sure to subscribe. We're on all audio listening platforms. We're on Apple, Spotify, Google Play, Amazon, Alexa, Stitcher, you name it. We are there. If you listen to us on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to give us that five-star rating. And if you listen to us on Apple, please make sure to leave a review or comment. We're also partnered with Fansided and Minute Media, so you can find this podcast on the Jet Press or the Daily Knicks. We also got that YouTube page. Knicks, comma, Jets, comma, ETC, period. No one writes out, et cetera. That shit's wild. Find the page. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. That way you know when a new episode drops. When you watch a video, hit the like button, leave a comment, add to the conversation. We want to know your thoughts and opinions. Do you think Michael Ford should stay? Do you think Michael Ford should get canned? What are your thoughts about Robert Sala? Uncle Mike, where you been, man? We need we need your thoughts, man. We know you're riding high <laughs> with Bro, us. He went to Miami, but because oh, they lost, nice. he just went fishing. Like because there wasn't for the playoffs, he went fishing instead. So he's he's even more hyped, but <laughs> no, he, he he went out there. He tried. He tried his best. He tried his best. Shout out to you, Uncle Mike. Let us know your thoughts, man. Let everyone know. Let us know your thoughts on what you think is going to happen. Who do you think your playoff? Well, give us your playoff predictions. Your Super Bowl teams. Let us know all of those. While you're also over at the YouTube channel, we got another podcast. Winning picks weekly. <laughs> John, let's go, Horn Greg. <laughs> and our guy and co-host Chip Murphy. These guys go through every single sport possible. It is playoffs for the NFL. You know what that means. John, Greg, these guys are locked in. They're ready to give your takes. You heard Greg telling what he's going to hammer, all right, because these guys these guys are just tuned in Yo, with, the, with the Jaguars. Go, got it week one NFL playoffs, Jaguars, Jaguars, Jaguars. Greg's hyped about it. Love it. Love the Jags. <laughs> Love Tennessee last week. That cover, that was beautiful, even though they got robbed. <laughs> no, Josh Dobbs for life. So if you love sports betting and putting money down on the line, these guys got you covered. Just make sure to bet responsibly. And the last and certainly not least, please make sure to follow us on all social media platforms. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. We are there. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in for another Jets episode of the Knicks Jets Etc. podcast. We out. Let's go Jets. Welcome to the offseason slash hell.